Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be talking about all the different properties of all the different quadrilateral shapes. And we're also going to talk a little bit about how the quadrilaterals fit together as a family tree. So we had one big foldable where there were multiple sheets of paper folded on top of each other and glued together. Um, so you're going to need that big family tree foldable, if you will, and then something to write with. So this first diagram is a really good way of explaining the family tree or how the types, different types of quadrilaterals break down and as far as like which shapes share similar properties. So we have three different branches to start with quadrilaterals. So the overarching big umbrella um, shape is a quadrilateral and a quadrilateral has four sides and there's different types of quadrilaterals and those are all the shapes below it. Um, because all of the shapes below it also have four sides. So there's three separate categories that we're going to start with. And then as you go down through the tr family tree, that means that it's also a type of shape that's above it. So if we look at the very left side of this family tree, the first type of quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So as we go down, a rectangle rhombus are also types of parallelograms. And then if we go even further down, we have squares. So square is a type of rectangle rhombus, and parallelogram. And those are all different types of quadrilaterals. And if we go to the middle, we have heights. They're kind of off in their own little world over there. And then if we go to the right, we have trapezoids, and then more specifically, isosceles trapezoids. So this video is going to explain all the different properties that differentiate a parallelogram from a kite or a kite from a square or a rhombus from a trapezoid, right? Like we're going to define all the properties that make these shapes, the shapes that they're called. Um, but I feel like this layout of a picture is a better way of explaining what this foldable is trying to do. So this is also the same family tree, but it's a little different. So whatever is glued on top of each other will also have those same properties. So like here, a square is glued on top of a rhombus, rectangles, parallelograms, and quadrilaterals. So it's that same like going in or up, excuse me, so like going from squares to rhombite or parallelograms to quadrilaterals. That was the same way we did here, like square to rhombus, parallelograms to quadrilaterals, right? So we have three different categories. We have parallelograms, trapezoids, and kites. Today we're going to be working from left to right through this foldable. And so each one of these little flaps in your foldable has um, things underneath that you should be writing in. And that's why you're going to need your pencil today. Um, feel free if you want to draw some example shapes on the outside of your foldable. You do not have to. So if you want to pause your video right now to draw some example shapes, you sure can if you forget like what a rhombus looks like or what a kite looks like. Okay, so our first foldable flap should be quadrilaterals. And we already kind of talked about how to define a quadrilateral. They're the overarching umbrella basic word for a shape that has four sides. And then, of course, every shape that has four sides, there's some of their angles in that quadrilateral. So the sum of the interior angles inside is going to be 360 degrees. And we learned that from a couple of videos ago, too. So starting again on that left side of that foldable, so the first type of quadrilateral is parallelograms. So parallelograms have opposite sides that are congruent and also parallel, which is why it's called a parallelogram, is that their opposite sides are parallel and they're also congruent. We also know that opposite angles are congruent. So in this picture, we know that angle A is going to be congruent to angle C and angle B is going to be congruent to angle D. We know consecutive angles are supplementary. So consecutive means next to, right? So that means that angle D plus angle C is going to equal 180. Angle A plus angle D is going to equal 180. So any two angles that are next to each other is what we're talking about there. If it has one right angle, then it has to have four right angles. So if you have a parallelogram that has one right angle, it's going to have four right angles, which will make it a rectangle, but we'll get to that in a second. Diagonals are going to bisect each other. So in this picture, I'm going to go back to this picture. If we draw a diagonal from B to D and from A to C, oops, that's not a very good straight line, but you see what I'm saying, the diagonals bisect each other. So this will be congruent to this, and this will be congruent to this. 
So they bisect those segments, those diagonals bisect each other into congruent parts. And then diagonals separate the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Triangle, let's say ADB would be congruent to triangle DBC. So hopefully you get all these words written down in your foldable for parallelograms. And then if you wanted to draw anything on the side or off to the side and write some of this stuff, it should be pretty self-explanatory, but I just wanted to show you what these words mean. Okay. Okay, so then moving on to rectangles, if we go to the rectangular flap, it is a type of parallelogram that has four right angles. And not all the time will they give you all four angles pictured. Like, they may just give you one angle like this, and then you'll just know that it's a rectangle because the rest have to be right angles, like we talked about in the previous slide. And then their diagonals are now going to be congruent. So... When we go through this foldable, if there's a category like a rectangle that's a type of parallelogram, because it's a type of parallelogram, it's also going to have all the same properties of a parallelogram. In addition, it also is now going to have diagonals that are congruent. So the side that goes, or the length that goes from this point to this point, this point to this point, are all going to be congruent to each other. So this long length is going to be equal to this long length. And it also has all those properties of a parallelogram as well. Okay, rhombi is the plural way of saying rhombus. A singular shape would be a rhombus, B-U-S, like a bus that you ride to school. Okay, it's also a type of parallelogram, so it's going to have all those properties of parallelograms. But now all four sides are congruent as pictured in all these different pictures. Their diagonals are now additionally going to be perpendicular to each other. We can see that right here. And we can see that right here. And their diagonals are going to bisect their pair of opposite angles. So now we're having some angles actually being created. So because we know in parallelograms opposite angles are congruent, like angle D and B are congruent, now because we're bisecting um, those diagonals, or excuse me, because we have uh, uh, congruent diagonals with other properties of a rhombi, those angles B and D are going to be bisected to get congruent halves. And then, of course, C and A as well. So those markings are missing on the tri on the rhombus in this picture. Okay, so all the properties of a parallelogram, diagonals are perpendicular. Because the diagonals are now congruent and perpendicular, they're also going to bisect those opposite pair of angles. Okay, moving on to squares. So squares are a type of, type of quadrilateral that share all the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus. So all those properties that we just went over with rectangles and rhombi, it's going to have all those properties merged together. So as soon as you have those two types of different sets of properties together, you have now formed a square. So a square is a type of rectangle, rhombus, quadrilateral, and parallelogram. And we're going to move over to the right top corner of our um, foldable to trapezoids. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one set of parallel sides. So we would have markings with little arrows to show us that these sides are parallel or these sides are parallel or these sides. I think you get the picture. You're going to have exactly one pair of sides that are going to be parallel. So a subset of trapezoids or a specific type of trapezoid is called an isosceles trapezoid. So an isosceles trapezoid is also a trapezoid, but what differentiates it from a regular trapezoid, as you can see in the picture on the right over here, um, is that an isosceles one is going to have those non-parallel opposite sides and they're going to be congruent. So that bullet is not in your foldable. So if you want to add that in there, that non-parallel opposite sides are congruent. That's what makes it isosceles. Um, I think it's kind of obvious since we know with, op with isosceles triangles that those two sides are congruent. Um, I think this foldable kind of just missed that piece because we know what isosceles means. But that's what makes it an isosceles trapezoid. Sometimes people call trapezoids trapeziums. Um, it's the same shape. Uh, it's just another word for it, so you'll see that as a label in the picture, but 
In this class, we'll call them trapezoids, but just know that they're also called trapeziums. Okay, so in addition to all the properties of a trapezoid, um, isosceles trapezoids also share base angles that are congruent and diagonals that are congruent. So again, if we go to those diagonals, we know that like from A to C is going to be congruent from D to B um, in the isosceles trapezoid. We also know base angles are congruent. So when they talk about base angles, we need to figure out what the base is in the trapezoid. If you remember back to the area formula for a trapezoid, we know that we have two bases. So actually, we have two sets of congruent angles. So on one base, we have angle A and angle B, and those angles are going to be congruent. And then on the top base, the shorter base, we have angle D and we have angle C. And those two angles are going to be congruent. So we have actually two pairs of congruent angles because in a trapezoid we have two bases. So those are the three additional properties um, on top of a regular trapezoid that make it isosceles. And then our last foldable for today is kites. So a kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So we know that two pairs of uh, opposite parallel sides makes a parallelogram, but when they're not opposite from each other, they're two consecutive. So if we look at the side length JK and JM, those two sides are adjacent to each other or consecutive touching each other. They have a common vertex J. Um, those two sides are consecutive next to each other and they're congruent. And then the same thing with KL and LM because they share that point or vertex L. So that's a kite, what defines a kite. We also know that their diagonals are going to be perpendicular, as you can see. So KM is perpendicular to JL in this picture. And then exactly one pair of opposite angles are going to be congruent. And it's always that pair on um, that lies on the shorter diagonal. So angle M and the angle K is going to be that those two pairs of angles, or sorry, those two angles, that pair of angles um, that lies on that shorter diagonal are going to be the ones that are congruent. So I don't know if you want to add that in there, that it's always going to be the two angles that are on the shorter diagonal that lie on that shorter diagonal. Okay, and I think it kind of makes sense, right? Like those angles should be congruent because they're both between the one tick and two tick marks. Whereas like J is definitely, just visually, if we look at this picture and we assume it's drawn to scale, J is not going to be congruent to L. L should be smaller than J. Okay, that is all of the things that you need to write down, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when we come back to class, we are going to work together on some practice problems on how to solve different kinds of problems, knowing all of these properties. So having this foldable ready and written in and available to you will help you so much on those homework practice problems. I want to thank you for taking good notes and I'll see you soon.